Hi everyone, and thank you for tuning in to today's video chat. We apologize, we were having some technical difficulties, which is why we're getting started a little bit later. But um, my name is Monique Bowman, and I'll be moderating today's chat. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or any other website, social media plays a major role in our everyday lives. So today we'll be discussing that phenomenon and how coaches can use it to promote themselves and their organizations. Uh, our panel today includes Brendan Schneider, Director of Admission and Financial Aid at the Swickley Academy in Pittsburgh. Brendan is, was a force behind establishing the Academy's online marketing efforts and also consults with high schools about their social media programs. He also has his own blog at schneidervee.com. Also joining us today is Sean Soderling, Director of Operations for the University of Evansville. Uh, for the men's soccer program there. He joined the Purple Aces uh, because of his experience with social media at the college and high school levels. Uh, in addition to his coaching duties and uh, in addition to his assistant coaching duties, I apologize, uh, he also runs the Evanville's, Evanville's men's soccer social media accounts. Uh, if you have questions for our panelists, feel free to uh, tweet them into us at nscaa.com or by email uh, marketing at nscaa.com. So uh, we'll try to address your questions on air, but if not, we'll try to also include it in a wrap-up article at NSCA.com. So without further ado, let's jump into our conversation, starting with Brendan. Uh, why should high school uh, and club coaches consider using social media? Uh, it's a great question, Monique, and I think that um, the biggest reason is that their players are there and, and their parents are there. Um, you know, at Swickley Academy, we've noticed um, anecdotally in the last year and a half a huge increase in the number of our high school students that have been using social media, specifically Twitter. And I think it's important that you're there as a coach. Um, you have to monitor it because the kids really aren't sure whether it's private or not. And we've had some incidents of that over the last, uh, again, 18 months. It's also a great way to communicate and then really which I mentioned before, the education piece. I think it's important as you educate the players on the field that you're helping them out with the social media piece, which is pretty important and they can get in trouble with pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean, uh, similar question, but for the um, college uh, coach, why should a college program be involved in social media? I think it's a great way to get your name out there. Uh, it's, it's a thing where these days, I mean, every child that uh, we can think of has a cell phone or has some type of social media account. Uh, and, and the thing with colleges especially is we have to market ourselves out there uh, to want to get uh, kids to want to come to our school to play here. And so with social media is we have to look at the trends that are, uh, you know, what kids are following, what are the things that they're, uh, they're interested in on, on Twitter or Facebook, whatnot, and kind of promoting our, our school uh, enough through there that they kind of catch it, they follow along to where, you know, they show up to our camps, uh, then to one day uh, get recruited and possibly play here at the University of Evansville. Okay. Uh, and the question for both of you, uh, how much time does it take um, to, to run these kind of programs? Sean, we'll start with you. Well, I can tell you from my experience, uh, just before I joined on the University of Evansville, uh, I was at Vincent's Lincoln High School in Vincent's, Indiana. And there was a, a good program, but just didn't have any type of backing, um, whether it was from the community or the school it, itself. And so I had to use social media to really pump a, a student population, uh, community population, to, to come out to our games. Uh, so for me, I, I admit I do put a lot of time into social media, and I'm pretty sure my fiance would tell you I put too much time <laughs> into uh, my social media, but um, I think it's something to where social media is just like technology or anything else. It's consistently changing and getting better, and so if, if you're not on there for you know uh, two hours, there may be something that you have missed that you could have used uh, uh, to your own. So for me, I think that you, the more time you put into it, uh, the more marketable you become because the more people are going to see it. Brendan? Yeah, Sean, I'll agree, and I think my wife will echo your comments uh, <laughs> with my social media use, but I think social media will take all the time you give it, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, and I, you know, to echo Sean, I'm on quite a bit, but I, I think the best thing to do is to set limits and to create a system or a strategy that works for you. So uh, over the course of a number of years, I use uh, certain tools that allow me to monitor and schedule and send and then um, at a minimum, I'm looking 
three times a day, usually when I get into the office in the morning to get my coffee, um, right around lunchtime, and then when I leave at the end of the day. Uh, that's at a minimum. I'm using it much more, but I think that if you're just getting started, if you set up a schedule uh, along those lines, I think it'll, you know, you'll be successful. And, and to add what he just said, too, I mean, you can find out uh, your specific demographic, you know, what times that they're actually on viewing Twitter. You know, uh, a study I've done, a lot of soccer-related um, uh, followers, whether it be prospects or even other coaches are generally on between a noon time even in down to uh, 7 p.m. So for me, uh, with what I try to do, a lot of stuff that I really, uh, with my tweeting or, or uh, Facebook type stuff, is I, I do go a lot between noon and that 7 p.m. time period because that's when I know uh, most of our traffic is viewing what we're putting out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, you kind of both touched on this. What kind of tools do you use to, well, let me back up. Um, for high school and youth coaches, Brendan, um, what platforms do you recommend um, starting off on? You mean which channels? Which social? Yes, media which channels? channels? Yeah. I would I would really think backwards. What audience are you trying to reach? So if you're a high school coach, and you know you could argue parents as well as kids. Um, for kids, I would say Twitter. Um, for the parents, I would say Facebook. Uh, if you're a youth coach, and you know, depending on how young you go, you might not be trying to interact with the kids on social media. So typically Facebook is where most people are. Uh, so that's where I would start. Brendan, uh, any follow-up to that, for especially for college coaches? In terms of, I would or, say, oh, yeah. Sorry. You, you mean the, the channels or the tools? Uh, channels. The channels, I, I would say Twitter. I mean, Sean can maybe speak to the college use a little more. But again, I've seen Twitter just explode with kids, almost taking the place of instant message or um, uh, text messages. And then even we've had kids that are getting off of Facebook. They just are getting sick of it, so they're on Twitter um, a lot. <laughs> Sean, any follow-up? Uh, yeah, uh, just you know, my experience with the high school uh, level for the last 10 years before coming to the University of Evansville. Uh, for me, Facebook was uh, a big thing because at the time that's what everybody had. Uh, when I got to Vincent's Lincoln, Twitter was not uh, a big thing because I had come from a school of 3,000 kids going to a school of barely 700 kids. So, you know, the, the times had yet to change uh, to where I had, I had moved to. Uh, and I had just made a, a group page uh, on Facebook. And I allowed that to be the place where parents, uh, players, students, the community could get onto uh, to see what we were doing. I would definitely say now, uh, you know, and I, I had just read about this the other day, uh, a big uh, member of Facebook that was on their board uh, had just left. And the reason he had left because he was at a friend's house. Uh, some 15-year-olds, 13-year-olds were there. Uh, he was just asking them about social media. And he asked them what they were using. And not one of them said Facebook. They all said Twitter or Snapchat or other various things. And he asked them why they, said, why they didn't choose Facebook. And his exa their exact quote was, Facebook isn't cool anymore. <laughs> and, he, and, and whenever he announced his resignation, it was, that's the demographic that I'm going after. And if it's not cool to them, within five months or five years, so to say, this is going to be, quote unquote, dead. Uh, so for me, I just know with a lot of high schoolers, because it's easier to check Twitter than it is Facebook, uh, me, I use the, the Twitter a little bit more for our social uh, backgrounds for UE and myself just because it, it's more accessible, it's easier to get to, and I think it's more demographic driven than Facebook is. Okay. Uh, you kind of touched on this, Sean, um, but we have a question from Twitter from Miami Valley YSA um, talking about Facebook, uh, a private Facebook page. So mm -hmm. what are some of the pros and the cons of setting up that um, private Facebook page for league coaches, and then how would you go about doing that? Well, I think uh, just kind of from what I've, I've experienced in the past with what I've done, um, you know, it's all about what you control on there. And you can set your, your page to where no one else can write on, on the page, only you as an administrator. Uh, you can put it to where select people can write on there. Um, that was kind of one of the things that I, I found out with making my high school page was uh, opposing teams uh, would, would get on there and, <laughs> and kind of post some, some trash talk maybe before a game, but then after we beat them, they didn't really talking any more trash <laughs> after that. But uh, it's all about what you put in there uh, that, that you control. 
Uh, and that's why whenever people do make a private page or make a group page, uh, whenever they ask me, I, I definitely always say, go through and take the time to look at each and every single thing that they tell you. Do you want to control this or do you want to have people be able to access it? Uh, so it, it, for me, I would say really dig deep into your account settings on that private page uh, and just make sure, you know, it's one of those things where the less that people can write on there almost that everybody can see is, is worse. The, the more that you want... Um, more people to see you type it yourself don't really let anybody in there because you're the one in charge of it and if anybody else writes something on there you know ultimately it's going to go back onto you uh, so for me I would say whoever makes the page get that administrator and you be the one who write on there and if, if they have something you can put on there uh, you know if you have any questions email me at whatever yeah if, if I can follow up I agree with Sean and I think a page by its nature is public so if you want to use it as a bulletin board and then lock it down, as Sean suggests, if the question is designed to um, create a private group where people can communicate and use Facebook as the vehicle, then a group, uh, and Facebook has expanded <coughs> excuse me, their group offerings, where you can have it be closed, only let certain people in, and, and depending on what the, you know, the person who has the question is trying to do, a, a private group might be a better option. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also have another uh, tweet in from at Vandy01. Um, what, what coaches and programs do you consider social innovators and leaders and why? And uh, Sean, would you like to go yeah, with this I'll one? start. Well, okay. first of all, hi, Amanda. I saw that tweet earlier. <laughs> um, I'll tell you one that I just really uh, found recently. And, and, and for me, it's hard to say just three because I don't look so much just at soccer coaching, but I do look at what other coaches are doing. Uh, in various sports. Uh, one that I've really gotten recently is uh, the coaching family on, on Twitter and they, they retweet the best things and, and it's to where they are going on consistently throughout the day finding people who are posting lesson plans or, or even uh, things to do with your, your youth league and things like that. And, and so they retweet so many different people I don't think I could pick just three of those. Um, to, to choose from. But another one that, that is really interesting to me um, is John Calipari at the University of Kentucky men's basketball team. Uh, John is, is a marketing guru, so to say, uh, and the way that he uses his Twitter was something that actually inspired me uh, while I was at uh, Vincent's Lincoln High School was he used his not so much for recruits more than he did for the community and to get more people out to the games. And I really learned through his, his Twitter account that reaching the community is safe for you. So it's kind of a kill two birds with one stone type thing. So for me, I, I say find any coaches of any sport, really, um, that, that attract you uh, in the way that they do things. And, and like I said, the coaching family, especially, especially soccer-specific, is very, very good. Brendan, would you like to follow up with that? Uh, I'm not sure that I can point to any. I do follow the Kalapari uh, feed, his Twitter account, and I think it's great. And I, and I think the reason that it's so successful is that, especially somebody at that level, uh, you know, he pulls the curtain back and allows you to see behind the scenes. He'll tweet photos. Um, you know, I, we're in Pittsburgh. I'm actually in Moon Township, which is where Robert Morris University is. Kentucky was just here. Uh, he's a Moon Township grad, so he went to school here and tweeted some photos of going to school and you really get to see the person behind this public persona and I think that's what really resonates with people and if coaches can do that they'll endear themselves to the community to the parents and to the students and, and that's ultimately what they're trying to do. And I can say from, from my experience with, with Vincennes, uh, you know, I used my own account uh, to truly let, you know, kind of as Brandon said, see that behind the scenes type things. I think that's something that draws people. Yeah. Um, is that behind the scenes reality show type feel to it. Uh, you know, I, well, I used my account to give you the eyes that I see, what I see. Uh, if you go onto our Ace of Soccer page or even mine, I, I'm consistently putting up photos and videos of us during training sessions or, or any time that, that we're together just to kind of give you behind the scenes of, of what it really is like because it's more than just kicking a ball. Uh, you know, there, there's more to it than that and, and the the lessons that we learn uh, and the way that we get these these incoming freshmen to come young men as they graduate here and get degrees and, you know that's a, that's the best reality show in itself and and if I can follow up because Sean has said it without saying it he's successful because of the content that he shares he's sharing photos and videos 
uh, so it becomes visual as opposed to just, I mean, not to say that if he has a quote or something else, but because he's sharing those images, that's what really people are looking for. And, and, to, and to follow up on that, that's actually something that I had learned. Uh, I had taken a, 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 a social marketing class just a couple years ago. And one thing that, that we found out was the more visual uh, aids that you use, it's, it's more attractive to people because whenever they're going through their timeline or they're going through their Facebook statuses, if they see something about a photo, you know, eight times out of ten, they're going to click on it just to see what the photo is. So mm -hmm. for me, the videos and the pictures, hashtags, I mean, those are the things that I try to use as, as often as possible because I know that's what's going to attract more people to my page and, and as Brandon said, try to make my, my page more attractive. So just to kind of su summarize, you know, social media is an opportunity to build a community um, online in order to get them to games or to support your program or and stuff like that. Um, and then also making sure to share relevant content. Um, uh, relevant content, whether it's videos, photos, quotes, or just general information. So um, all good, good stuff. Uh, we have another Twitter question which um, kind of leads us into some of the um, pitfalls of social media. <laughs> so um, Brendan, we'll start with you. Um, some of the implications of uh, players' tweets and, and Facebook posts um, during their, you know, at a, at the, especially at the high school level. Well, you know, in terms of getting trouble on social media, I think there are two avenues. The first is, and, and we should bring it up, your relationship with the student. Um, and I think that what's important to remember is that the boundaries that you have with that child offline need to remain online. Um, and sometimes that can become blurred, and that's what you have to be careful of. I, I typically say, if there's any doubt, there is no doubt. So if you're not sure you should be doing something online, don't do it. Um, so I think that's one area. I think the other area is, again, going back to educating kids. Um, I've set up and used a couple tools to help monitor uh, certain words and phrases. And I could especially see as a coach, you want to monitor your kids' accounts. To see, I see Sean shaking his head, <laughs> to see what kids write, and then I think sometimes the kids post it thinking that people don't see it or, or can't, they don't know what it is. Um, you know, I've seen kids, and it really becomes an educational thing, hopefully it doesn't cross the line. So whether kids are swearing or representing themselves in a way which isn't good for them or their family or your program is important to teach them right away. Uh, if it does cross the line, then you'd have to deal with it if you break a team rule or something like that. But I'd be interested to hear what Sean has to say on this. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> there, there are actually two avenues uh, that, that I would suggest. Um, you know, when, when I got to, uh, to Vincent's Lincoln, um, you know, and, and really told the boys, you know, I think this is something to use because if people see it through your, your eyes and our eyes, people are going to buy in together, you know, because our thing was uh, the Alice Soccer family, it wasn't just the players and coaching staff, it was not just the school and the teachers, it was the whole city because we wanted the city to get behind us. And the thing that I always told them was everything you write on there, whether it's your opinion or not, what you write is a reflection of our program. And we all held our program to the very highest standard that we could. So if you write something on there that's a reflection of you, you got to think that people are going to say, well, that's a soccer player that's writing that. And he's coached by Sean Soderling. So those two must think the same thing as that kid. And I definitely didn't have the same opinion as the boys that are on my team. Uh, so that was a thing that uh, I really harked down about because um, I also, more social media uh, work that I've looked into, um, you know, a, a lot of things that I've, I've, I've seen recently, and I've, and I've told my high school kids this, I'm telling our college kids this now, is to where when we all were kids, you can't really go back on the internet right now and look up what we thought when we were 15 because there was no avenue for us to truly share it other than whoever was standing right in front of us. But now, every single thing that these kids tweet, every picture they post, every status they make is tied to their name and their brand for the rest of their life, this generation that we've got coming up right now. When these kids are in their 30s or, or 40s or even their late 20s wanting to get jobs, even if they untag themselves, people will still be able to go on and find pictures of them doing whatever they're doing or tweets or statuses that they had made. And so the thing I always tell the guys is remember, one of these days when you graduate from college that a future employer is going to look at this somehow, some way. They're going to find it or somebody's going to be able to bring it back up. So you want to definitely watch what you're, what you're writing and, and even to where I kind of tell the guys to dummy it down. You know, Don't use 
slang words that you know that your your friends know. And, and the big rule that I have is if your grandma wouldn't let you say it out of your mouth, don't type it because grandma knows best. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, my grandparents don't – actually, my grandpa does have a Twitter. Let me take that back. If, if I write something that I don't want my grandfather to see, I'm not going to – you know, if I would never say it to his face, I'm not going to put it out there in public. Um, so, you know, I can, I can say in my experiences in the last 10 years, I've only had maybe two incidences uh, with social media problems with players uh, saying the wrong things. But it's stuff to where once, once we kind of reiterated, hey, you know, what you write is a reflection not just of you but the program itself – that uh, really kind of hits home, especially with, with, uh, with high school kids because they understand, like, whoa, this is about me, uh, and this can affect me. And, I, you know, that, that public perception of them is what they, they, they hold on to. Um, and so I, I think that really does drive, a, drive home the point with them. So, and then for college-age um, players, do you see that um, changing by the time they get to the college, or, or is this something you have to remind them of as well? Uh, you know, I think it's, 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 more, it's more reminding them. Now, now, our players that we have here at the University of Evansville, um, I had to break it to them that I kind of Twitter stalked them for a while to see what they were writing. Um, but uh, we, we have, and we've worked on doing social media, working with them, uh, because I want them to be marketable, because whenever they get done here, you know, whether they play in the pros or they go and have a, a normal, uh, I guess, normal non-soccer job, uh, when they go into the workforce, I want them to be, you know, hands down the best option for, for that job. Uh, with our kids, uh, you know, and not just our kids, but I think college-wise, just by also studying other uh, um, student-athletes' Twitters and, and things like that, is I think, especially if you're tied to an organization, and your organization really puts out there that, you know, this is our standard, this is what we want people to think of us as, and those, those players have to understand that they have to hold that standard. Uh, our boys, uh, specifically at the University of Evansville, I have not seen, let me knock on some wood real quick, but I have not seen any uh, problems uh, in, in my time that I've been here. A lot of our guys are just now, uh, through, I guess, help of me, are starting to understand how they can market themselves and they can put their brand out there, not just as players, but as human beings as well. Um, you know, our, our big thing that we're using this year is hashtag all in. And it's not just about soccer, but it's about everything that we do. And you can truly see uh, that it's, it's having an effect because the boys, I've noticed, are tweeting the right things about being in class, about what they're learning uh, in, in with their professors and, and funny things that their professors uh, are, are saying. Uh, but also, they're tweeting about practice and, and training sessions, how good it was, how, how much the team is coming together, you know, what their, their plans are and what we're wanting to do. Uh, so at the college level, I think because it's a more – a more mature level uh, <laughs> than high school, I don't think you have as many problems. And it all comes down to what is their social media background before they come to you. Because if, if you have a kid who's never had a coach or a teacher or a parent really harp down on them about what they're putting out there, then you could have a problem. But that's where you need to have kind of a, a little lecture uh, before everything starts to say, you know, this is what we expect whenever you do use these means of communications. Um, so in college, I, I think you've come to notice a lot more uh, student athletes are very careful and just because of there's very many, there's various programs out there that colleges are buying. I, there's one that I can remember uh, called in, in, Indulgence U or something like that um, to where I know there's a ton of universities that are on there and if a kid tweets something and puts like birthday party for their cousin. The coach, the AD, and the dean of students gets a pop-up message that that student wrote something with the word party in it. Um, now, they can go in there and check, and it'll say, at my cousin's seven-year-old birthday party. Uh, but anytime that there's something on there, it tracks faces. It tracks things that are in the pictures, various as cups, bottles, any type of paraphernalia. Every single thing that they write is going back to their coaches and their, their university administration. Wow. Did not know that. <laughs> so t transitioning a little bit from how to use it for your organization, we're going to kind of transition a little bit and talk a little bit about how to use it for the job hunt. Um, NSCA.com recently posted a, um, a brief article about cleaning up your online um, profiles to make a good impression, um, which goes beyond just the interview or in person. So um, start with Brendan. Um, how would you... What recommendations would you present to coaches, you know, on the job hunt, and then how social media um, plays into that? 
<clears throat> I think the first thing I would do is just Google your name and see what comes up. Um, I did not see the document that you guys sent out, but I'm sure that was part of it. And, you know, it could be pretty scary, especially if you're young and maybe doing some of the things that Sean suggests, you know, Google doesn't forget. Um, you know, especially I'm getting old, so when I was a kid, none of this stuff, thankfully, comes back. So I think Googling your name is the most important thing and then dealing with those things that come up because there are ways to change that list. I think then, um, and again, I'm not sure if this is real big in the you know soccer coaching world, but paying attention to LinkedIn and having that be fully flushed out. And the important thing to pay attention to are keywords in your about section or description so that people can find you. Um, I also think, you know, and I, I go back and forth on the whole, um, you know, what do they call them, endorsements on LinkedIn. They have that new thing. I, I think that's a bunch of malarkey. But um, I think that having the keywords, allowing yourself to be found, um, talking about what you meaningfully did in positions, uh, even if you're just out of college, uh, you know, meaningful roles can, can be important. And then I think also taking your social media channels, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or Pinterest or Google Plus for that matter, um, lining them up with what you're doing on LinkedIn and turning them from a personal to a more professional uh, kind of uh, persona. You know, uh, Sean mentioned it, everything online becomes your, that you do becomes a personal brand. So if you're going to come from that student perspective to that uh, professional perspective, I can. I, I think it can only help you. Okay. Sean, uh, I I think um, you know the LinkedIn is something that I've just tapped into over the last couple of years. I definitely think you know that's the professional route to go uh, when dealing with future employers and things like that. Um, you know, with, with Facebook, especially as you get older. I I mean, I my college didn't have Facebook until I got out of college. Then we were able to get onto it. I can't even imagine the people I went to high school with and people I went to college with, had we had Facebook and future employers could see what uh, some people that I associated with, uh, you know, I, I couldn't even imagine what that would be like. And, and I do think what, what Brandon says is right about Googling yourself. And, uh, you know, I had an instance actually during this past fall where a false account on Twitter had been made uh, using my actual name. Um, and I wouldn't have known it if I wasn't, bored and Googled Sean Soderling, um, but I, I saw that somebody had wrote uh, something using my name, and a friend of mine actually had responded back to it thinking that it was me. Uh, and so I was able to go on at that moment in time and, and find, uh, and the things that this person wrote, thank goodness I found it before uh, my, my, my athletic director at the time found it, because it's, <laughs> they were writing things that I definitely would have been fired for and probably would have never had another coaching job again because of what the person was writing. Um, so, th you know, thank goodness I, I was able to, to go on there and do that. And if anybody from Twitter is watching, this is why I want to be verified. Uh, <laughs> uh, just would like that blue check right beside my name. But I, I think, you know, for me, I, social media definitely helped me get the job that I'm in now. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to hold that back by any means because I know in my time with the high school, using the Facebook, using the Twitter, it was things that our head coach, Mike Jacobs, was always telling me was very fascinating to him and something that he wanted to learn more about because he knew that it would work uh, with the University of Evansville men's ACES soccer program. Uh, so I would say definitely for me, the more that I did helped me out um, just because of with, uh, you know, with the coaching specifically, you have to know more than just how to coach soccer nowadays. Um, and everybody has to have their own little uh, thing that makes them a little bit more unique. With me, uh, you know, on top of my coaching, my social media network, uh, background. I have a. I'm currently working on a degree in marketing. And I also have a, a degree in broadcasting. So not only can I do the social media, but I can make my own videos. I can produce my own movies, produce my own audio, t things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and putting those out into social media, I think personally makes me a little bit more attractive than say the next guy. So I think as long as you, your Facebook, your Twitter, and everything you do, you know, going back to that rule, if you wouldn't do it, if you wouldn't say it or show it to your grandmother, don't put it on there. Uh, and, and definitely with future employers, if you want them to truly see it, put it out there so that way if they do happen to Google you, they do happen to get on to your page, whether it's private or, or not, you know, if they pull it up, there's not going to be anything on it that they're going to be ashamed of and not want to hire you for. I think, you know, definitely as, as we talked about with personal brands, I think that's one thing social media can definitely help you uh, with your own brand and what could set you aside from, 
the next uh, person in line to, to interview for a specific job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, one just thing occurred to me when Sean was talking. I, I think also as you're getting ready to go from that uh, job hunt, that it's important to um, two things. One, get an email address that is maybe your name or something that's not inappropriate or, you know, that you wouldn't ex exactly want employers to see or hear. The other thing to do is, especially as you're young and, and jumping out and getting involved in social media, is I would encourage everybody to go out and get their um, social media ID and try to get it consistent across all of the different channels. So if you can get, and the problem is a lot of them are gone, but if you can get, um, you know, sign up for Twitter, even if you're not going to use Pinterest or let's say Facebook or YouTube now, go get the channel with that same ID so that when you're ready to use it, you have it and, you know, it, it, it'll be consistent. Okay. Sean, any other final thoughts? Uh, I would, you know, I just kind of the same thing along with Brandon. I think uh, you got to keep it consistent, you know, for me. Uh, you know, my everything that I use is Coach Soderling. Um, and so for me, I think, you know, that, that's what verifies me as, as my brand because I am a coach. Um, so I, I want people to relate the two together. Uh, you know, and just for anybody who, who's listening, you know, uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, any questions that you have, whether it's how to use social media, uh, especially high school coaches, you know, things that they can do to to want to gain more population at their games and, and more population for their team, uh, you know, definitely feel free to get a hold of me. Uh, you know, as, as my, my fiancé and, and all the coaching staff here can tell you, my phone is at my hip at all times uh, or in my hands because I'm constantly taking pictures or tweeting about what we're doing. Um, anything that I can do to help out with, with everybody who's watching right now, uh, you know, Brandon and I can definitely help out with, with you all in, in that facet. But I think personally... Social media is, is we're, we haven't even seen the, the peak of it yet. That's just my opinion. I, I'm thinking by the time I'm uh, not fully black hair and I don't have to dye it anymore, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a whole whirlwind um, different than what it is now. But you know, I, I definitely would say, you know, as we said, it's all about the brand. It's not just you personal, but if you make a youth league page or a team page, that's the brand that you're putting out there for the public, a, a, as Brandon mentioned. And what you want people to have is that perception is what you've got to put on there. All right. Well, thank you both very, very much. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in today. Um, a recording of this um, live chat will be available at nscaa.com slash live. Um, and then we'll also follow up with any um, questions we weren't able to, to get to today. I also want to encourage you to... Um, to sign up for our newsletters, the NSCA newsletters. Um, if you're viewing on, on our um, home page, on our web page, um, there's a blue box off to your right hand side and you can go ahead and click that and go and sign up. And then be sure to check out our, some of our articles, especially the one professionalism in the digital age, making the right, for, uh, the right first impression online. Um, and then any other uh, questions or comments, please sh be sure to tweet it to us at NSCAA or at NSCAA HS for high school. Um, again, thanks everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.